Hello there, welcome back to the Zim Inverter channel. Today we will discuss how fast a power inverter can drain battery. When you decide to buy a power inverter, many things must be put into consideration. You have to consider the load it will carry, the type of inverter you'd like to use, and how long you want the battery to last. Ever wondered, how fast will power inverter drain battery? Knowing how long it takes for a power inverter to drain a battery is important in guiding you on how to make your purchase. This will help you to know what size of inverter you need to run your appliances. You will also be able to estimate how long it will last. Another important feature to have in mind is the capacity of the battery. Various factors can affect battery life such as the features of the inverter. Our focus in this video is to know how fast an inverter can drain a battery and ways you can extend the battery life. Formulas and Rules for Estimation 1. Amps x volts equals watts. 2. The capacity of a battery is determined by the volume of amps it uses within a specified number of hours. That is known as amp hour capacity AH. 3. If you have a 12 volts inverter system, for every 100 watts load on the inverter, it requires about 10 direct current amps of the battery power. 4. If you have a 24 volts inverter system, for every 200 watts load on the inverter, it requires about 10 direct current amps of the battery. So, the first thing we are going to do is determine the watts amps of your load. We also need to determine the length of time the loads will run. To determine this, we need to calculate the input load of the appliances written on their nameplates. However, you must note that some appliances do not have any constant load. For such appliances, you will have to arrive at the estimated load they use. For example, a big-sized refrigerator with a compressor of 750 watt. If the refrigerator runs one-third of the operating time, it will have an estimated load of 250 watts per hour. So, having worked our way through the load of the appliances and their running time, we can now calculate the size of the battery bank. And to achieve this, we will do some simple divisions. For a 12 volts inverter, the load watts is divided by 10. While for the 24 volts inverter, the watts is to be divided by 20. This will now give us the right amps of the battery that will be required. Assuming you are to use a hairdryer for an average of 10 minutes per day and it draws 1000 watts from an inverter battery of 12 volts directly. So, if we are to receive up to 1000 W from a 12 volts battery, then the battery is expected to supply 84 amps approximately. In simple mathematics it is, 1000 volts equals 84 A. A refrigerator the full-sized type draws 2 amps power at 120 vac. When you multiply 120 volts by 2 amps, you will see that the refrigerator is using 240 watts. Therefore, what will be required of the battery will be 20 amps for the refrigerator to run 240 divided by 12 equals 20 amps. Normally, refrigerators have an operational period of one-third in a day. That is 8 hours per day. This makes 160 amps per hour drain. 20 amps by 8 hours equals 160 amp hour. The next thing now is to get the size of the battery. From here, the first thing to do is to have the load divided by 10 if it is a 12 volt system. If it is a 24 volt system, you will divide it by 20. This will give you the amps of the battery required. Example of how to calculate input. 1. Appliance watts equals 1000 watts. 2. Amps of 12 volts battery equals 1000 tenths equals 100 amps. 3. Amps of 24 volts battery equals 1000 twentieths equals 50 amps. The next thing is to multiply the DC amps by the number of hours the appliance is expected to operate. To calculate that, here is what you should do, based on 4 hours duration, if it is 12 volts battery, 100 amps by 4 hours equals 400 AH if it is a 24 volts battery, 50 amps by 4 hours equals 200 AH. It is important to have the proper amount and type of batteries. 
Deep cycle batteries, also known as a traction battery, is a good battery to be used. That is because it is good to sustain the cycle of repeated charging and discharging. To conceptualize how fast an inverter will drain a battery, let us use a 3-hour operation duration. Arriving at an accurate figure can be quite tricky. This is because of the various rating categories that are being used by these battery manufacturers. And apart from that, these batteries have varying nature. Batteries with high discharge rates have low capacity. We have extensively explained how to read and understand your battery's capacity. However, we will try to use another way to make the explanation clearer. This time around we will be looking at the car battery. An average car battery with a 60 amps can run television that has a 100 watt average rating. The car battery also works at the PW150 rating. That is to say that the television load is within the peak power of a ProWatt inverter. As a result of this, the inverter cannot be an obstacle to the TV's run time. This is quite a normal situation with people living in trailer homes and truck drivers. Especially those that wish to have that entertainment while on the move. To reduce it to numbers, we have 60 AX 10 by 100 watts. The implication of this is that television can only run for a maximum period of 6 hours. After that, the battery would have been depleted. However, this is a car battery that we are talking about. Therefore, depleting it completely is not the best. That will get you stuck or stranded. So, you have to reduce the viewing time to a maximum of 3 to 4 hours. You can only run it beyond that time frame if the car engine is running and the battery is kept charged. Almost all power inverters that are below 300 watts are able to run on a car battery. They connected using the DC plug, or cigarette lighter, on the car's dashboard. They may also be sold with jumper cables for you to connect it directly to the car battery. The larger inverters are most times hardwired into the vehicles, boat, or RVs. Breakdown of appliances and their watts. Microwave. 1250 watts. Circular saw. 1250 watts. Toaster. 1200 watts. 40 inch fan. 1100 watts. Space heaters. 1000 watts. Pump. 1000 watts. Iron. 1000 watts. Coffee maker. 800 watts. Vacuum cleaner. 750 watts. One half drill. 700 watts. Refrigerator. 500 watts. Blender. 400 watts. Computer and monitor. 400 watts. Jigsaw. 350 watts. CPAP. 200 watts. 25 inches TV. 175 watts. PS2 and Xbox. 125 watts. iPod. 120 watts. Laptop. 60 to 90 watts. Printer. 75 watts. Satellite. 75 watts. VCR. 50 watts. Compact disc player. 40 watts. Mobile phone. 24 watts. Tips to help you manage your battery better. The discharge rate of an engine starter battery should not be below 90% of what is remaining. For the deep cycle batteries like the marine battery, it must not be less than 50%. This caution is also prescribed by most of the battery manufacturers. The reason is that if the battery is used below the prescribed level, it will cause the lifespan of the battery to reduce drastically. For a battery like the ProWatt 250, it is equipped with a lighter plug. This helps it to have an easier connection to the loads it is meant to carry. This is most important for the smaller one. However, if you want to connect an appliance with 100 watts load and above, you need to make a direct connection to the battery terminal. 
This helps to reduce the volume of voltage that would have otherwise gotten lost while using a thin, long wire. With the reduction in the loss of voltage, there will be a shorter period to get the whole system running again. There are situations that you may need to have extra batteries to support the inverter and give it enough power. There are some power tools and some other appliances that may have up to 200 watts. And you may want to run such tools for a purpose that is outside a domestic use. If such activity is expected to run for two hours and above, then you need a support battery. The battery that you will need should be a deep cycle battery. It also needs to be capable of running for the expected length of time without being charged. The types of deep cycle batteries that are most common are 8D, 4D, and 27. They have ratings of 220 amps per hour, 150 amps per hour, and 90 amps per hour respectively. Finally, the alternator must not be allowed to be connected through an isolator module to your auxiliary battery. The reason is that the inverter will discharge the engine's battery. This does not matter whether it is turned on or off. This will lead to the waste of much needed electricity unnecessarily. Types of inverter battery. In order to get the best out of your inverter, you need a good battery. Here are some types of inverter batteries we have and their qualities. The lead acid battery. This type is the cheapest type of inverter battery. It has a lifespan of about three to four years. It also produces strong power. But on the downside, it needs regular maintenance and gives out poisonous gas. So, to use this type you have to be careful so as not to endanger the life of the people in the house. It is advised that it should be installed in a well-ventilated part of the house. Maintenance-free batteries. This type of battery, unlike the lead acid battery, is sealed and does not need much maintenance in terms of topping the electrolyte. You just install it and you do not need to check up on it again. But the downside is the cost. 